Taronga Wildlife Retreat I think is a fantastic build. For someone who wants a full interactive experience of the Taronga Zoo, this is the place to stay. What this project shows is how the demands of a hotel can be harmonised with the habitat of the wildlife at the zoo. When you say eco-retreat, you would think of venturing out into the wilderness. But this one I'm about to show you is right here on the majestic Sydney Harbour. Alex, I never expected a hotel experience at the zoo. I know, welcome. Isn't it unique? Let me show you around. Wow, Alex, this is a great first impression. I know, isn't it amazing? So this is the Nagara Lounge. It's where guests check in, check out, where they start their sanctuary tours, and it's really the heart of the retreat experience. Taronga um, needed a new accommodation product that was environmentally sensitive, um, sustainable, and something that really nestled within the existing site. You're pitching this to who? There's a mixed audience that we've seen so far, so lots of families, lots of young children, which is great, because that's really at the core of what Taronga does, educating children up, and then lots of couples as well. I can't help but notice that this view is a hero part of this room. We're incredibly lucky to have a view like this and the Nagara Lounge, the design of it was very much formed around it, making sure we achieved that amazing harbour view. Oh Nick, <laughs> look at this experience. This is just majestic. Oh, to have this opportunity to engage with nature in, in such an intimate way, it's um, it's really special. You feel that they're almost in your room, you know. You're just right outside your window and you can open it up and have a little chat to them. From the outset, the zoo's brief to us was to create a habitat for the animals, as natural a landscape as possible, so the animals would feel right at home, um, be healthy and flourish. And we work hand in hand with Cox Architects to, to really make sure the materiality and the character of the landscape just melded and, and bleeds in really well with the buildings. Retreat is designed to achieve a five-star Green Star environmental rating, which will make it one of the first hotels in Australia to get to that level. And part of that is initiatives like the CLT timber structure that, the whole, that all these pods are, are built from, and the timber cladding and the sun shading elements that you can see with the sort of leaf patterns, and the black butt uh, cladding on the buildings. So there's, there's all sorts of sustainable approaches which also help integrate the uh, building into its environment. Nick, I noticed walking around the retreat that the uh, corridors are on the outside, unlike other hotels where they're in the core. Yeah, and that was a very uh, conscious decision to make it part of the whole environment and the experience, engaging with nature very close. You can touch the leaves, you can look down at the uh, animals below and the landscape. So it's part of the sustainability to achieve natural ventilation, obviously, for these areas as well, rather than having to air condition them. Equally with the experience of any hotel is the restaurant, isn't it? And this one here seems to be sitting on top just like its crown. It does. It's a wonderful piece of jewellery um, to sit above the retreat. And the, the curved form of the building responds to the adjacent uh, Taronga Centre. The thing that it really tries to celebrate is the, the outlook to the harbour and the CBD. Having been set such a challenging task, to not only design a remarkable set of buildings, but to also create an experience that is both sustainable and respectful to its place. I believe the design team have really nailed this one. I don't know about you, but when I think about hospitals as a mum, I feel a bit sick inside. They're stressful and confusing places, especially when it's your child that's sick. But Perth Children's Hospital claims to have reframed the way we think about hospitals, what they look and feel like. How can we design a contemporary children's hospital through the eyes of children? They're coming here in conditions of, of stress to create spaces that are legible and welcoming to kids was one of the key ambitions. Wow, Steve, this is spectacular. This beautiful open space and natural light in a hospital. I mean, that's unusual. Yeah. yeah. I mean, really. Yeah. This, this gallery space is 
really the heart space of the whole hospital. Right. This is the social spine, if you like, over multi-levels, as you can see. Every ingredient of the hospital is accessible from here, whether it's the kids' rooms right. or clinics, etc. There's the ability from each of the kids' rooms to see Sky, King's wow. Park, and in some cases the river as well. So that's interesting because it is something that I'm quite interested in biophilic design and there's proven health benefits that if you can see nature from your room that your healing time is faster, your pain threshold is higher. Yep. So that's obviously been incorporated at this perfect location. The creative team attached to this project is enormous. Not just architects but all of the stakeholders, nurses and um, people who work in the hospital, mm. plus a whole series of youth groups and kids oh, okay. groups. So they actually contributed pretty heavily to the composition of the spaces, to how we use colour, in particular how we created wayfinding from a kid's perspective. There's a whole sequence of, of artwork which is yeah. integral to the building, not just as, if you like, individual pieces, but as a collective. Mm. They're, they're so a whole range of experiences, whether it's screens or yeah. sculptures for Love kids that. to play on. This is one of the very early but pretty critical sketches, which was looking at inspiration, which we took from Kings Park as much as anything. The idea of the stem and petals as being the informing diagram for the entire building. Right. And each of the petals, that petal form, that beautiful curvaceous petal form enables every room to have outlook over this extraordinary parkland. Kings Park has informed the entire plan form of the building and it's informed the entire colour palette for the building. These are all natives, yes. native trees yep. and native bushes to the area and flowers um, and you've pixelated it and then you've picked the colours from the pixelations. Yeah, That's so we, we distilled this photography over a six month period um, picking up the seasonal cross-section and then as you say we pixelated, selected and um, literally out of, out of these came the absolute colours for the entire building. Filled with colour and a sense of playfulness, this beautifully detailed building demonstrates that good architecture and design can make a sick child and their family's journey just a little less stressful. Pretty special, isn't it? Architecture, it's open to interpretation. What one person loves, others will think, what on earth are they thinking? I'm in Berwick, once a rural country town outside of Melbourne, now slowly being consumed by the urban ring, where people are looking far and wide for inspiration to build their homes. We have French chateaus going up, complete with Baroque detailed window. There's Spanish missions with tiled roofs. There's even what seems to be the Italian embassy going up. But I'm about to visit a home that responds to the Australian condition using simple materials composed to frame the great outdoors. Well, Michael, what makes good Australian design? What makes us distinctive from the rest of the world? I think it's about a relaxed uh, style of living. Um, it's about beauty with durability mm. um, and also sort of making the most of the conditions. Now, you've got a, a pretty big site here. What were the driving force behind the materials and what have you used? It's corrugated steel in the, the monument palette with recycled brick, which were painted white. Now you come back here, you know the clients. What was that like working with someone you knew, a friend of the family? Oh, it's actually really good. It was, it was fantastic. You need to have a good understanding of, of what your clients are after and, um, and who they are and, and how they want to live. Our relationship with Michael is, is very special. He's a friend of one of our children. We've known him since he was in grade seven or eight. The other side of that is Susan has an incredible eye for design and detail and very clear ideas of what she wants to do. Now, Susan, I know for a fact you weren't happy with the first design. We finally had the design. We were ready to build. It all been ticked off. And, we came, and I rang Michael. I just had this feeling. I rang Michael. I said, Michael, can we meet on site? He came on site to be confronted by me crying. And I said, I feel we've lost the sense of what this block is about. It's gone from boundary to boundary and I just feel that it needs to nestle more intimately with the environment we're putting it in. And Michael, to his credit, took it all on board and three days later he presented me with a new design and I cried again because it was perfect. 